Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we're going to go over how I painted the French Occultist from the French faction. This is made by North Star Military Figures and it's for the Silver Bayonet game made by Osprey, uh, written by the great Joseph McCullough. So let's do a quick little spin of this model. It's simple, but what I love about it is so unique and different from all the other models that North Star has put out for Silver Bayonet. Uh, hugely characterful. But let's talk about what I used to make this model come together. So I used Rust-Oleum Gray Primer. This is their fillable sandable one. Great on 3D prints and it really bonds well to metal. So I use mostly Army Painter paints. So here's the list of what I used. Deep Blue, Dark Stone, Oak Brown, Fur Brown, Dragon Red, Alien Purple, Skeleton Bone, Necromancer Cloak, Mummy Robes, Warlock Purple, Kobold Skin, Demonic Yellow, Void Shield Blue, Greedy Gold, Wolf Gray, Tanned Flesh, Pure Red, Bright Gold, and I did use some Citadel paints, uh, pretty much the technicals and the washes, so Sterling Mud and Seraphim Sepia. So this uh, young lady comes together quite quickly, and so let's go ahead and get started on it. Actually, did I use Void Shield Blue? I don't think I ended up using it. I have to change my notes. All right, let's get on to painting this one. We'll see what we did. To start this model, primed them Rust-Oleum Gray. This is their sandable, fillable primer. It does a really good job sticking to metal, um, and it's really cheap and available. But I'm going to use some Army Painter Deep Blue and we're going to just do the dress. We're at the blocking in stage so neatness doesn't count. Now that the blue is dry, I'm going to get some Army Painter Dark Stone. This is a really dark gray with a hint of brown, if you want to think of it that way. So I am going to do her jacket. And since this is a large area, we're early on in the model. One part we have to be careful with is the blue skirt. Try to avoid putting stuff on there. But we're going to do some touch up highlights on it later, so it probably won't be the end of the world if you got some brown on there. But we're going to go all the way around. Now we're going to get some Army Painter Oak Brown, and I'm going to do the staff here. The more colors we fill in, the more it starts coming together. Now we're going to do her skin. I'm going to use fur brown. Remember, her foot's peeking out. 
here. Don't forget, you got her hand here and her hand here. We're going to do a little cuff right there. That's modeled in, so we'll paint that separately. But I want to do the skin first because there's this bone necklace and this earring. And so I'm going to do the skin first, then do the bone. That way, if I did the bone first, I'd have to use my brush and get around, try to get down to the skin. And I don't want to do that. It's easier working from the inside out. Okay. Now I want to do her headband. And for that, I am going to use Dragon Red. Now we're going to paint her bodice right there, and for that we're going to use Army Painter Alien Purple. I'm thinking that this will go with the skin tone quite well. Yeah, it'll complement the blue, the brown. See, as we move along, and since this is a uh, more intricate outfit, let's get more and more precise. There are paint strokes. Remember, we're moving the paint handle around, not the brush hand around. Looks good. We're going to do some Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Now where this is going to go, is we're going to paint the skull here and the skull here. I actually want to get some of these feathers. just want to bright, get a consistent base, so I'll brighten these up a little bit. Just work carefully here. I'm also going to do the bottom of the staff. It looks like there's some twine going around here. So using the side of the tip, just gently drag along. It appears to be twine tied around the bottom here. And then the next part we got little bones right here. 
probably some small mammalian creature. So I'm just dragging the tip of the brush along the top sculpts there. So let me get back here and finish this up. Now what we're going to do is take some Necromancer Cloak. And I am going to do all the hair here. Something you can try doing is just going along the edge of the hair here and you very carefully marking it around the edge that way you don't get any on the surrounding colors then once you've got it blocked in you can just quickly go through and to work from the eh, from the outside edge and paint it in here Now I'm going to take some mummy robe and we're going to paint the white of the inner skirt here. Then we're going to do the cuffs here. The underclothes to the bodice. Say. Mummy robes and skeleton bones might look like some of the white offshoots, but when you actually get them on the model, you can see a difference between them. Hence why I wanted to use two colors instead of one. And if you wanted to merge both colors, you can make that work. And don't forget the cuff of the other hand over here. Next we are going to paint the feathers here. I've got two over here and those ones right there. So I am going to use a variety of colors. So I am going to use Warlock Purple, Kraken Skin, Demonic Yellow, and Void Shield Blue. So I want some tropical feathers popping off of her. So I have these next to me. So I'm going to put down, work from top down. This one in the middle, I'm going to make the yellow one. This one over here, the yellow one. And this one, the green one. Kind of looks like mint chocolate chip. So make sure to do both sides 
Oh, I went back and painted this um, necromancer cloak as if it were also hair that belonged to the skull. See, it's yellow, yellow, okay. Now there's fancier ways to do feathers, but this is supposed to be a quicker paint job. This one, the pink also, the warlock purple, I like that color. I'm going to give a spot of color compared to the other models in the range. And if you slip, just get your brush wet, go back and scrub the area. There. And I think that will be it for the feathers. Oh, get the underside of the pink one. like ice cream. Next we have some gold elements we're going to do here. So I'm going to use some greedy gold and I am to get some killer hoop earrings right there. Can I make gold here? Yeah, that'll probably be about it. Any buttons or anything? No, yeah, that looks like it. Okay. I'll let that dry and we will move on to Sterling Mud. I'm going to put a little texture down on this base and find my application tool. And we'll start layering down some mud. And this will go over the um, green stuff. So there's a metal base. I use some green stuff to kind of smooth out the transition on the metal base. That would be noticeable. And the idea is you put some of this on it and that help unify it, make it look like one nice neat piece. But you don't have to do that if you don't want. Now it's going to take a while for that sterling mud to dry, and since we're waiting, no point wasting time here, I'm going to put a wash on it. And I'm going to use some seraphim sepia. And I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. Wipe it off, just moisten up the bristles. This is a brush that used to be a fine pointy brush, but I've beaten it down. And so what we're going to do is just apply it. Now this is like brown, the hint of yellow in it. It's one of my favorite washes there. Now when you're doing this, make sure not to touch the sterling mud, because once you touch it, and you, if you try to go over something in the other model, parts of the model, it'll just drag that mud up into it. And it complements the yellow and the skull very well. To it. Get a careful there. Alright, now we're going to let that dry for a long time. And with the white skirt, I'm going to go and pull a lot of it off. There we go.
Excellent. Now we're going to let that dry for a while, a long while. Then we'll be back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start doing some highlights, punching this model up. So I'm going to go back to my deep blue, and I'm going to use some wolf gray. So I've got my brush, got the bristles wet, and I'm going to start with the blue. I'm going to think light shines down, so where on the model would light shine and hit on it? And I'm going to put a nice thick coat. just in the raised areas and the reason I'm moving quickly and I want a nice thick coat is once I've got it where I want it and it's still wet because we're dealing with an acrylic and I've got a little humidity in the air so I don't have to worry about it drying too much second time. I'm going to use what I put on the wolf gray. I didn't clean out my brush. Just take a little bit of wolf gray and go back and forth over more refined smaller area. And what it'll do is it'll start mixing with that still wet blue, the deep blue. And you see it kind of lightens up the folds of the dress. But since it's still slightly wet, it blends it in a little bit more. And that'll make the edges pop on the dress and more organic matter. Put a little too much, just wipe it off. There we go. That's cool. I want a little bit around her right knee. Excellent. Now I want to highlight her staff. I'm going to use some tanned flesh. I just put a very little bit. So I'm going to get some on my brush, load a bunch of it, and then wipe most of it off, and just kind of where I've have the light, I can see where the light wants to reflect off of it. So I'm going to match that with where the tan flesh is, and just put a little highlight. See a wet. So I got my brush wet enough, and I wipe enough of the tan flesh off that when it goes over, it kind of serves more as a, a filter. Let some of the oak brown shine through. There we go. Now we're going to go back to the mummy robes. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to put a little edge highlight. Got a little bit on her. Didn't want to do. All right, scrub that off. Alright, so I'm just putting like the little bones here. Little dots. And we'll just put around the ocular sockets. Like that. Don't forget she has a little skull right there. We'll get that. So just the corner of these little rope bindings. All right, then we'll now do the dress. Oh, we've got one of the little chicken bones there. The little tiny finger bones. Yeah. So we just run, same thing we did with her dress, just trying to make some of these raised edges pop out. 
nice smooth little coats. More layers on the um, raised edges, fewer on the recesses, and we can create a color gradation. And then we also have some of our little cuffs here. There we go. Oh wait, there's a little, kind of like a little knot. Let me our feathers on there and get some of that. Now, as we start drawing to a close pretty soon, I'm going to take some skeleton bone again, but I'm going to take a dry brush. I'm just going to get a little bit of paint. Let me go ahead and get some of this off. I'm going to go like that. I've got a paper towel off screen, so I'm going to wipe on it until it appears that no more paint is coming off. And just rub it on some of this brown here. Get it on some of the hair. This is how I'm going to punch up the brown from the dark stone. And uh, give it kind of a dusty feel. So you see, I just dipped it once. And so I just want to hint of the paint coming off. And get the little hair coming off the skeleton there. Okay, cool. Now I want to do the headband. I'm going to switch over to pure red here. And I'm just going to use the side of the tip of the brush. We've done this other places. I'm just going to hit some of the raised areas. Make sure not to touch our dreads. All right, cool. While we're touching up stuff, I'm gonna take some bright gold, shake that up real quick, because we don't have much gold on this model. So I just wanna hit the earring out. It kind of blends away, so maybe something a little bit brighter. It could stand out more. That's good. All right, so now I have Warlock Purple, Demonic Yellow, Void Shield Blue and Kraken Skin in front of me. And I'm going to do load a little bit of each color and just brighten up. Just use the side of the brush, brighten some of those up. Which one did I paint blue? Oh, I guess. Is it green? Huh, I guess I didn't need Void Shield Blue. Never mind. Disregard that. Belay my last. So you can go like that. I'm not going to clean out the brush, and I'll go switch to the green. Don't forget to turn them over. And the sign. that will brighten up the flowers. Now what I'd like to do is just on a piece of the green one, I'll actually take a little bit of yellow and just on the bottom half, just go like that. That way there looks like there's a little bit more color on that green. See, just flick little spots of color. Now let's go I'm going to do the yellow of the little one. A little bit of yellow there. And let's go to the warlock purple. There we go. 
that is our French occultist. Very happy with the model. Very different from what you get in the rest of the collection. So that's cool. Alright, well thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. And we'll see you next time.